gorgeous, sunny Palo Alto is situated in the upper western corner of Santa Clara County in the San Francisco Bay Area. It is a principal city of tech paradise, Silicon Valley, and home to the world-renowned Stanford University. Indeed, much of Palo Alto's history is intricately connected to the university and its founders Leland and Jane Stanford. Established in 1884, Palo Alto came into being mainly because of the creation of this prestigious institution. After losing their only son to typhoid, Leland and Jane decided to build a university in his memory. Palo Alto, first known as University Park, sprung up around the school, becoming its own community of students and business people, spilling over from the neighboring town of Mayfield. Today, the city continues to thrive, home to some of the most educated people in the US, as well as a slew of tech companies, including HP, the Ford Research and Innovation Center, Skype, and Lockheed Martin. But is Palo Alto worth visiting? The answer is a resounding yes. Welcome to Via Travelers, where we aim to help keep you updated on must-visit travel destinations and experiences. Subscribe to our channel to find out more about where we go to and what you can expect to see there. Visitors to Palo Alto have an array of activities to choose from. This city is a blend of old and new, offering historic architecture and culture and a myriad of modern chic hangouts and retail outlets. All this is set against a breathtaking view of the Santa Cruz Mountains and surrounded by national parks. In this video, I'll take you through the 10 best things to do in Palo Alto, how to get around, and even what you can expect to spend. The HP Garage is one of our favorite Palo Alto attractions and a must-see for tourists, especially if you're interested in tech history. Considered the birthplace of Silicon Valley, this discreet little hideaway is now a California historical landmark. Once the home of Dave Packard and Bill Hewlett, it was in this one-car garage that they invented their first audio oscillator and established themselves as would-be giants in the IT industry. As the bronze plaque by the door declares, it's hard to imagine how different the valley might have looked if these Stanford grads hadn't been convinced by their teachers to stay in California. While the HP garage isn't open to the public, it's rife with photo opportunities from the street or sidewalk. Art buffs can visit the world-renowned Cantor Arts Center on the Stanford University campus to view some of their 38,000 piece strong visual arts collection. And the best part? It's free. This incredible museum, also established by the Leland family, began with their private collection. But after the disastrous San Francisco earthquake in 1906, it seemed to be on the brink of closure. It remained in disrepair until 1917, when Pedro Joseph de Lemos was brought in as a curator, building and growing the museum's collection albeit kind of poorly. By 1953, the Committee for Art at Stanford was established, tasked with the lengthy process of once more revitalizing the seemingly ill-fated museum. Unfortunately, it suffered structural damage again in 1989 during the Loma Prieta earthquake. Still, after investment by various historians, patrons, and collectors, numerous refurbishments and donations, it reopened in 1999 and has been going strong ever since. Today, it's home to the world's second largest collection of rodent sculptures. The Bronze Sculpture Garden is a must, and we highly recommend setting at least half a day aside for traversing through the galleries. We're not done at Stanford yet, boo, oh, no. Once you've had your fill of art, you simply have to catch a classic film at Stanford's historic movie house. But be warned, the only screen movies that were released between 1910 and 1970. That said, you'll definitely feel like you traveled back in time, especially considering the neoclassical architecture of the building. Another prominent feature of this landmark theater is its mighty Wurlitzer organ, designed and installed to accompany silent films or to be played during intermissions. Today, the Stanford Theater is responsible for 25% of classic film ticket sales in the US. Even so, it wasn't always smooth sailing for the Stanford Theater. It fell on hard times in the 1960s, with attendance dropping to a dismal rate. Fortunately, it was purchased and restored in 1987 by none other than the Packard family. When visiting this venue, you can enjoy a classic film for only $7. The last Stanford landmark on our list, and one of our best-known Palo Alto attractions, is the Hoover Tower. This breathtaking 280-foot-high tower is home to the Hoover Institution Library and Archives, and was once the hideaway of exiled Russian novelist and philosopher Alexander Zolzhenitsyn. Founded by Herbert Hoover prior to his tenure as president, 
The architecture was inspired by the Spanish new cathedral of Salamanca. It has a 46-bell carillion, an observation deck offering sprawling views of the campus, office space, a functional library, a research center, and a think tank. The tower is open to the public between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. on weekdays. Tickets to enter the Hoover Tower galleries are free. However, you need to reserve a spot online. Of the many things to see in Palo Alto, the Museum of American Heritage is an excellent option for families with children. With rotating exhibits showcasing both local and national history, you can expect to see installations exploring what daily life looked like from the late 19th century through to the 1950s, including a kitted out general store. The museum also preserves various inventions and technological artifacts, many of which speak to Silicon Valley's storied history. With events throughout the year, including lectures, workshops, and special programs aimed at kids, you're sure to find something that appeals to your inner historian. General admission is free to the public. The museum's operating hours are 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. from Friday to Sunday. Special events and tours can be booked online for a nominal donation starting at $3. It wouldn't be Silicon Valley without some homage to tech, which is why we highly recommend a visit to the Computer History Museum, located near the famous Googleplex campus. As the name suggests, this unique attraction details the history of computer technology and its impact on the world over the last 2,000 years. There are events and workshops throughout the year, as well as interesting interactive exhibits, including autonomous car rides. General admission is $17.50, and the museum operates from Wednesday to Sunday between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. When you're done visiting Palo Alto's museums and grand buildings, there are plenty of relaxing activities all over town to keep you busy and immerse yourself in the city's culture. One of our favorites is the Downtown Farmer's Market, where you'll find all types of vendors selling fresh produce, crafts, trinkets, and street foods, all while listening to local live music. The market attracts plenty of residents as well as tourists looking to indulge in seasonal cuisine or purchase handmade goods. And what makes it unique is that it's all for a good cause. As a thriving nonprofit, partial proceeds from the market are donated to a local charity that assists the elderly. Entrance is free, and the market runs every Saturday from 8 a.m. until noon. Power Alto might be known for its academics and tech wizards, but that's not all you can expect to find if you visit. The Palo Alto Baylands Nature Reserve, which covers nearly 2,000 acres, is the most extensive remaining marshland in the San Francisco Bay Area, and is home to some remarkable bird and mammal species. The ecology itself is fascinating, with a blend of both tidal and freshwater habitats. Fifteen multi-use trails will keep you busy for hours, and if you get stuck, you can swing by the Lucy Evans Baylands Nature Interpretive Center for more information. For those wanting to spend a day in nature, there are gorgeous picnic spots, accessible restrooms, a sports center, and a picturesque duck pond. Entry is free, although groups will need a permit, and you can visit any time from 8 a.m. until sunset. While Palo Alto has plenty to offer in terms of day trips and attractions, we cannot overlook the array of fine food and drink on offer too. Try fine dining at Protégé for a taste of new American cuisine with international flair. Alternatively, visit the Freewheel Brewing Company for a multitude of craft beers made using both American tradition and British innovation. And this is just the start. Those looking for a little retail therapy will love Town & Country Square, which boasts some of the world's leading retailers, as well as a selection of great eateries and cafes. There's something for everyone, and intelligent town planning makes it easy to navigate this area on foot. Palo Alto is undoubtedly known as one of the principal hubs of Silicon Valley and, of course, for Stanford University. However, it's also a great spot to visit if you just want to immerse yourself in traditional American history and culture or just spend some time exploring the beautiful nature surrounding the city. A formidable public transportation system makes it easy to get around. And while Palo Alto is by no means cheap, many of the top attractions are free to visit or charge reasonable entry fees, so you'll have no problem filling your days with activities. Thanks for visiting Via Travelers. We'll place links in the description below to all your Palo Alto travel essentials. Please subscribe to our channel for more informative video updates ahead of your travel adventures. This is James thanking you for watching, and we'll see you fearless travelers again soon.